Hello friends I made this for and welcome to another episode of Tarot Tips. I got a haircut and feel fresh as fuck so I wanted to spill a little tea <sighs> about ethics and tarot. In my last tarot tips video, I talked about the ethics of tarot as far as like pulling for other people who are not present or have not asked for you to do so. So basically you not asking for permission. But today's ethics are going to be around checking in with yourself to see if you are projecting in a reading. So there are a few things that really are important to me. You can look at things in a spread for yourself or for someone else. Looking for patterns is always important, right? Is it all major arcana? Is it all minor? Are there a lot of court cards? Are there a lot of reversals? Are there repeats of numbers or of certain, um, you know, things? Are there themes that you're picking up or is it all over the place? But something that I think doesn't always get talked about is that sometimes we project what we want on cards rather than what we actually feel is there. And this is a really tricky topic. Looking at cards for somebody else, we might see themes from our own readings that we did for ourselves. And that can be a really great indicator to help us navigate somebody else's reading and it might give us some insight. But what's really important is that we're not giving advice that is not helpful to the other person or we're not just positioning and pushing what we want them to get out of it. The truth is if you're reading for somebody else, you are going to give messages to someone. You're going to say certain things and some things might resonate, some things might not, and some things might just resonate differently. And there are ethics I feel like we need to keep in mind when we're reading for others and making sure that we're giving everyone the space that they need to make the decision for themselves. So today I wanna to talk about some things that we can avoid when reading for ourselves or others, even more importantly, I think, is reading for other people and how we can ensure that we're not just pushing a narrative that sounds good to us without checking in and really feeling it out and listening as we're reading. So first step is when you are reading for somebody, something that might be helpful and even for yourself is starting with a check-in asking them of a broad intention that they want to bring to the cards. And I say broad because when we get very specific, sometimes we get tunnel vision. So instead of saying, oh, I really am stressed out about my roommate. Can I get a reading for my roommate? Maybe going, you know what? There's a lot of stress in my living situation and I want to pull some cards around what are the themes and narratives coming up around the stress in my home life and what might be helpful at successfully moving through it. So that's one way, is a way we frame it. How can we frame our reading in a way that is more holistic and broad so that we are taking the lessons of our everyday life and taking real lessons out of those that we can nourish ourselves with? So it's not just a matter of this person versus this person, which is its own thing. If you prefer reading, whatever, blah, blah, blah. That's how you do, boo. But how can we look at this situation, this person, this issue and go, what's a, what's a bigger thing that we can focus on here, release-wise, or just bringing more awareness towards? Because this can make us a little bit more happier with how we look at tarot but also not use it as a way to weaponize one person against another. So that's one important ethic I feel is strong, a strong thing to bring into your reading. What's the big picture, not just the small picture? Okay, so keeping it broad is really helpful at getting a little bit more of a successfully therapeutic experience out of your tarot practice. Another thing that's really important is making sure that as you're talking with a client, you are asking them questions. 
So what I like to do is pull some cards, you know, I'll pull cards for people and I'll say, so this card represents this, this, and that. It can also mean this, this, and that. What is resonating for you? Or go through a level of three cards and say, these three cards in this order to me resonates this way, that way, and that way. How do you feel about the messages I'm seeing about the cards? Because they can also mean this way, this way, and this way. Also paying attention to what order, what they're near, and what rotation are they right side up or upside down. So that can be another thing. Making sure you're checking in with your clients is super important. It's not just about ethics, it's just about being an attentive reader. There's a difference between telling someone their cards and reading someone their cards. And to me, reading is more of a two-way street. We're working on this together. I'm helping by kind of identifying what some of these things are. And if anything pops into my head that feels like it's really important, I definitely want to send that message to the person I'm reading for. However, I also think it's very important to also frame it. So here's another advice, a little tip of advice. When you have a message that's coming through, it might be really supportive and helpful to say to your client, hey, I'm having a message coming through right now that's very direct. Is it okay if I tell you? You might be, they might be surprised, you might be surprised, but giving a little bit more permission also means that you are doing your due diligence to stay within their comfort zone. It's really important if you're reading someone else's cards that you're taking the time to ask them questions, to check in, and make sure that you're not overstepping because that's very important in tarot. We can start easily projecting that this is a sign that your breakup's coming and you don't feel like you can move through it and this reversal of cups means that your heart is just shut down. But that wouldn't feel very good to the person we're reading for. And saying that might not actually give them the most from that reading. It might be more beneficial if we asked, hey, this reversal to me is coming up as a block within your heart space. Does that resonate with you? Does that feel like something that is true for you? Or do you feel like your heart wants to overflow but isn't going to the right people? That emotional energy is not circulating back to you. These are the ways that we can just kind of frame our tarot again to be truly holistic for who we're reading for. Because if we're reading for somebody else, it's very important that we're doing a service for them, not a disservice, not making them panic or scared. To me, it's really important to make sure that we as readers are being as ethical as possible, asking how someone is doing, checking in with their well being and reflecting with them. If this Ace of Cups is your heart and it's feeling upside down, where do you think it's upside down in your life? Where are you not filling up your cup? That way we're again getting a truly therapeutic experience out of our tarot and the tarot for our clients rather than just pinpointing things and, you know, it can be good to shed light on something and get fucking real. But in those situations, I think it's much smarter to take a step back, check in, and then be straightforward. That way, you're not stepping on any toes or making sure that the well-being of your client is number one. But this goes for you too. If we frame it for ourselves, then we become more compassionate for ourselves and our tarot practice. For example, I can pull this Queen of Cups for myself and say, how am I stepping into this role? How am I stepping into Queen of Cups today? I'm sharing my compassionate self through this video. That's how I am stepping into the Queen of Cups. I'm being authentic and 
yeah, authentic and me and sharing what I love and care about in a way that is grounded and deepens my relationship with the tarot by talking about it. Boom. So this is one way I like to look at tarot. Again, I've taken classes from Lindsay Mack, Daughter of Wands, Erin Johnson, and How to Be a Witch, Melissa DeLynn. So a lot of what I'm saying is very related to the same sort of teachings from these amazing witches. So I definitely recommend you check them out. And definitely let me know if you feel that this way of reading is helpful or if you want a more in-depth look or explanation on how we can use tarot in a more holistic way so that we're getting the most out of our experience with these amazing cards <laughs> just so we can make sure we're getting the most out of our practice so with that said thank you for being here of course if you like what i do check out my links down below i love reading for people in a way that is holistic and wholesome so that we all get what we need in a therapeutic setting. I'm not a therapist, but using tarot as a tool to support our mental, emotional, physical, professional, and spiritual well-being in a wholesome way. So like, comment, subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, let me know if you want more in-depth looks at how to make tarot truly a therapeutic experience for you. And until next time, my lovelies, I hope you have the most blessed dark moon ever. Bye-bye.